What's up? We are back for another episode of Men Have Feelings Too. Who knew? And today my guest is Igor Galabov, and he holds awesome transformational retreats in Philadelphia. Igor, tell us what you do at these retreats. Hello. Thank you for having me here. It's beautiful. Um, So the retreats are set to allow people to have a deeper transformation. You know, the more time we spend in a higher vibration space, the more we allow these energies to integrate deeper into our uh, cells and kind of embody this light of our soul, of our light. Um, And the the retreats are held in such a form where they take a human uh, from the let's put it this way, they take your personality from one level to a higher level of understanding. So we go through a transformation where you start to embody uh, and understand the operation of physical body, the spiritual bodies and integration of both of those. So merging the spirit, the soul and the body into oneness. So we can open up the heart, activate the glands within the body and connect to the energy bodies. From there, we go into transformation of the energy bodies and how to master uh, the emotional body, the mental body, the astral body, and basically align them into one field so they can become a perfect spirit where the spirit and the and the soul start to dance together in unity. So these are the types of uh, retreats uh, that are being held here, uh, not only in Philadelphia, but uh, also in other locations as well. That sounds freaking amazing. Mm, Thank you. How often do you do these retreats? Uh, Whenever we get the calling. So it all depends. Sometimes they come through whenever it's needed. And uh, I think there's going to be another one coming up uh, probably in October. So uh, planning one right now. Just had two of them back to back and they're beautiful retreats. So would love to see maybe you join next time. So it sounds amazing. (laughs) And I love earlier you were talking about um, the soul groups and I've really been feeling into like how all that really works lately and just the soul contracts we have with certain individuals. Is that something that you went into a lot during your astral travels? So, yes, my astral travels began in 2004. And as I started to basically travel through different dimensions and realities, I started to understand that, okay, there are certain agreements made in certain templates. Uh, What I mean by templates, templates are basically uh, these for I, the way I see it, they are disks of energies where there is certain agreements made within them. And these agreements are energetic agreements where you allow certain energetic exchanges. And uh, But on the physical form, they will appear to us as if we're going through a certain uh, uh, interaction with a person or a certain uh, uh, environment that you come into. All of these are just the physical aspects, but the energetic aspect is the main thing that creates this 3D reality. So as I started to go deeper and higher and higher in vibration, I started to notice that we can change all this. All these agreements that we put upon ourselves, as well as through our higher self and our soul level, each one has its own agreement levels. And so it's like basically the soul says, you'll come into this life and have this theme. And the big theme, the picture of it is com- is basically created by the soul. But how you play out on it is completely up to the individual. So we do have free will, but within a certain dy- dynamic of experience. I believe that too. So this is where we have to start to raise our belief systems and start to transform ourselves so we can basically become the master of our reality. And these agreements are made in our electromagnetic field. And it's in a certain rotational spin within it where we start to understand that. And once we understand that, we shift that agreement and an energy flow starts to open up that takes place through our energy fields, through the energy bodies, then through our physical body, through our nervous system and out into the into this world. So it is basically a multidimensional system that mm-hmm. operates from 
higher octave to a lower octave or from the lower octave to a higher octave. And we have to understand and differentiate, okay, is this change has to take from my physical body, from my personality, or this is can be done from the energetic aspect. So as we start to expand in, into the consciousness of that, you start to master this and you start to rewrite these agreements. And the agreements most of the time is learning lessons. And the most important thing that I figured out is to ask for an effortless transformation. <laughs> I <laughs> need to we, remember that one. We ask for change and transformation, but it comes with a certain lesson, right? So yeah. it's about learning constantly, like evolving. And if we forget to ask for the effortlessness, then it becomes kind of uh, hard or complex and it has to be ripped away from us in order <laughs> for us to understand that change can be easy and flowing. So that's one of the main things that I learned is to ask for the effortless transformation. <laughs> my shaman told me that too during my first ayahuasca experience. She, she was just like, you don't have to learn lessons through pain. Exactly. But I didn't listen. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. So these contracts that we have with individuals, you're saying that we can like change them or nullify them? Correct. Is so everything that we we come together with someone or something, or it's always for some sort of an exchange. Mm -hmm. You and me right now, we're even apart states apart right we are still exchanging some sort of energy because there's no time or space so there was an agreement of for us to come together to have this uh interaction right but on a soul level it's still growing all interactions are beneficial they're all developing their expansion of consciousness but how we perceive them is completely up to us so at this point right now we kind of say okay i came to interaction with let's say a, a partner in life, right? Or a work environment that you have. And there's a learning lesson there, right? Uh, it could be easy or it could be completely in a bumpy way. It's up to each individual to recognize this. This is where the intuitive aspect needs to come in. We need to develop that aspect so we can say, ah, okay, I'm having this interaction is for me to recognize this change or recognize a certain value, uh, a certain transformation, uh, an appreciation or a goal or a direction, whatever it may be. And once you do that, it becomes so much easier. And these contracts can be changed very easily. It is basically being aware of your energy fields. And when you are aware of them, now you can tap into these contracts, kind of pull them in out of the archives, change them, transform them, transmute them and release them okay and does this also go for like twin flames what are your thoughts on that yeah the the <laughs> the, the twin flame uh experience is a very deep one um yeah. and soulmate experiences i mean we're all soulmates i feel like uh but twin flame is a very deep experience that is there and i believe not everybody gets to experience that they get to experience that for a reason of a development of growth yeah uh, only when you're at a certain level of con awareness of consciousness only then your twin flame comes into your life it doesn't come because you want it, no, it i agree <laughs> when you least least expect it it will just like somebody tap you turn around and like and just be taken into a different universe and the whole world just around you changes there is no world it's just you and that person and the play comes in and two of the twin flames they have to kind of understand okay we came together to learn we came together to grow we came together to share uh what to share to share the experience of expansion of consciousness and if they get carried away in their personal desires, then the twin flame energy start to separate because they're not there to support one another. Mm -hmm. They need to be supporting one another. And what does that really mean? It's open communication. It's holding the space for one another. So there's a lot involved. It is not just, okay, having this beautiful love. I know. That, yeah. That, that's there. That's all. That's a given. But now what do you do with that? But is it a given? Because... I know twin flames, some of them never 
like past that bubble love phase, they never come back together. Because they haven't shifted. They have that love in the beginning. Every single twin flame, you're like, oh, he took my heart, she took my heart. And that was like an explosion moment. It was just this orgasmic experience through their body, <laughs> mind, and soul, just meeting that person, you know? Yeah. And they go through this beautiful experience, but how do they kind of keep that together? It is the work that needs to be done internally. Yeah, I think, I think initially you really can't with all of this distorted templates that are placed on us by our culture and religion and our upbringing. I think a lot of, um, I'm not sure how much I really like the label twin flames. I think that alone can create a lot of codependency, which is kind of like one of the things that this connection is meant to alchemize. Um, but I, I really feel like it's just very difficult for most people to hold energetically something that intense, especially initially. You, you know, in, in the truth of it all, um, going deeper inside, I think there are several twin flames for each one. Um, I, I think we can have more than one too. Yeah. I do. Uh, I know. I haven't experienced more than one yet, but <laughs> I well, I have experienced two back okay. to back. And every time I'm like, okay, I'm done with the relationships. I'm going to be celibate. Uh, yeah. What I did for a full year. And after that one year, uh, I went away to a dark room and I came out of the dark room and there she was. It was like, we just like looked at each other and the whole world just froze. <laughs> and people are looking at me, looking at her and we're like, there's nobody here. We were just gone. It was just like, that's it. There's nothing else. No one else. It was just us. And these experiences uh, happen for a reason. It is because the universe, first of all, we come here to experience uh, partners. We come to experience love. We There's two of everything we have. We have two hands, two ears, two organs, but we have one heart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that one heart needs another heart. So we come to have this unity. So these two hearts start to dance in this light of like the yin and the yang and, and create in this world. And if we get deviated in our um, personality and our programming that, were, that was given to us from our uh, families and our ancestors and everything else, and we get carried away in that and we don't go above that, uh, we kind of go apart and it's, it takes two to tango basically. Yeah. So, and both have to do their job, um, but both have to kind of step in and it's about open communication coming together. I so agree completely. Being, being not afraid of afraid. Not afraid of fear. It's like being afraid of itself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I, I love it. Like fear to me, is something that I will just lean right into. Um, but I guess not everybody does that. And that's where uh, the strength comes in. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm really glad that there's more people that think we can have that are saying we can have more than one. Because I, I'm like, why would why would universe, source, whoever allow us to experience something like that if we were only meant to have it for a short amount of time and then that's it? But if we take a look at what happened that short amount of time, you had like a quantum leap of evolutionary expansion. No doubt. Uh, and jump uh, from this mental, emotional, astral, uh, causal body that you just kind of expanded and then when you go back apart this a little contraction happens because you have missed that because you have allowed them into your energy fields so there is again this energy that comes back where it says wait a minute you have to learn how to be in love with love itself within your own self i think i i think i'm there <laughs> yeah and once we're in that level then another one comes into your life Cool. When you least expect it. And I think that this is what, especially people on the spiritual path, are 
focus is of being of service. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of it's about the service. mission. And that's yeah, it's a, it's very important. And being of service and to find the other partner that will is willing to be of service as well, and not for their personal reasons. It's very important to stay on that on that course is because that is what what two two of them came together. Yeah, is that intertwining of DNA that happens between those two on the soul <laughs> level. Fascinating. You know? Yeah, and it's no longer the the double helix; it becomes a triple helix. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you have that third energy that even in like after separation, that each of you, each individual, can continue to tap into for like endless creation and inspiration when it comes to mission. Yeah. Right. And I mean, my mission was activated in such a profound way and I will forever be grateful. And, um, you know, I'm not like seeking that experience again, but I'm definitely like opening to it. Yeah. Uh, And, 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 you know, it's uh, come to understand. It's like, I think relationship should not have any work in them. We should not work in our relationships for the relationship. What do you mean? Uh, well, because let, let's take a look at how consciousness works. Mm-hmm. If you are constantly uh, pushing away a certain energy, then the consciousness says, okay, I'm going to keep giving you that energy until you stop pushing away. So if oh. you're constantly working on something, then you'll constantly have to work on it. So the whole thing is not to work on it. The whole thing is to be in your own alignment with your own heart. And if we're in alignment with our own heart, then it's no longer work in a relationship. It is being in a relationship. Yes. So even if you are moving through and alchemizing your old distortions and old traumas with the reflection that you're receiving from that person, it, while it may be difficult and painful at times, it doesn't have to be work. Exactly. That what it, you're saying? it has to be. Yeah. So what happens is uh, the communication aspect to come together. They're sitting, they're holding space. Say, okay, love, how can I assist you? Oh, it's all about communication. Yeah. Sure. And, and it's basically open communication without saying, well, you made me feel this way. Okay, <laughs> yeah. fine. But do not take it personally because a lot of people start taking it personally. Oh, I made you feel this way. No, let the other one express it. It's okay. Don't take it personally. It is because you're taking them to a next level of evolution. You're raising their vibration. So this is where the dynamic of understanding needs to come in from a higher level understanding, not from the personality. Oh, I did this to you now. It's like the personal aspect now comes in. The ego comes in. Now we have to learn how to hold that space in a loving container. And if we can hold that space in a loving container, then the other one can grow and they will do the same, but it has to start from someone. Yeah. And you can feel, so I feel like on this planet right now, and I feel like this is one reason that the twin flame experience is happening for a lot of people now is that romantic love is very distorted. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Kind of like mm-hmm. our mainstream romantic love, there's a lot of distortions and that's not the pinnacle of love that's available to us. I feel like that a lot of times that like mainstream or whatever, like romantic love is, is, is just an emotional love from the solar plexus. I call it the fairy tale Disney story. Yeah. Yeah. That. <laughs> and, and there's such like a, a higher quality of love that feels kind of like a expansion right here. Like that instead of like the butterflies in the stomach, which if you really feel into it is actually a contraction. Yes. It, it, 100%. Um, it is the, the butterfly effect from the heart. Yeah. <laughs> the vibrating butterfly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, I'm, we have, I have this here all the time because to remind her, we have the toroid field, right? So it is, if the energy flows this way, now, if you put it this way, it's also flows out and in, right? So it's like basically from the center here. And if you turn it sideways, it also still rotates. Now the heart energy is actually this way, comes in and out like a butterfly effect. 
Mm. So if the toroid goes this way, up and down, the heart has a toroid field as well, but it's a sideways. Oh, wow. And it goes in the front and the back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that feels true. Yeah. Yeah. You got to <laughs> feel into these things. Uh, it's not as something that can be kind of, ah, this is how it is. You can't once intellectualize you it, it. Yeah. Once you feel it, it's like, it's an emotional thing. Uh, and the higher and the more crystallized your emotion is, the more balanced and in control you become of everything around you. When I say in control, it's not meaning like control, like, like gripping, do this, do that. No, in control, meaning uh, of your own self within mm -hmm. your own aspects, within your own energy fields. So in control of the way you react to things, the way you yes. do things. It's completely yeah, because that's, that's all we can really have control of. Yeah. You know. <laughs> So it seems like that's, you went that's through a, your own twin flame experience. What, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm having. That's like the one of the things I was talking about. That's an illusion because at the end of the day, I mean, that's just a phrase that we're using here to describe um, a concept that like transcends worlds and words, mm -hmm. right? So, yes but I'm not attached to the label. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't see any better word at this point right now, but a I know because, <laughs> you know, soulmate is every, anybody is a soulmate. We're all soulmates. I've been trying to figure out a word. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and oh, if you do, let me know. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's because it's been labeled uh, in so many different places and so many people come across it like, ah, I want to meet my twin flame. It's, and do you though? Like, do uh, you though? <laughs> yeah, it's it's not what you think it is. Yeah, it, it is a completely different evolutionary moment. It, it is there is no time or space. There is yeah. no distance. Uh, you will feel that person in every single situation. You will feel them in their dream state. What is happening to them? Uh, there's no time or space. It just is. That's it. You're becoming one. Uh, any problem they have you will feel anything that you go off, they will feel. And all of these things need to be very, very thinly addressed and aligned with the higher self and the heart aspect. I, it seems like there's always one that doesn't see it first though. And it happens for a reason. So it's either two of them meet, right? One of them will be at a higher frequency and they need to kind of raise up and move up together. Or what happens is the other one starts to come down. And when they start to come down, it might not, the other one might not really want to go up higher. So the separation starts to happen. Mm. So there, that's why it's very important to stay to your practices, to stay true yeah. to your true self, to be truthful to yourself and not be afraid to express yourself. Um, and no that's, matter that how was a big one I learned. The, yeah, I think I did the same. <laughs> so it, it is making sure that you stay um, true to yourself. That is the most important thing, not to betray your own inner child. Mm -hmm. So true. Yes. That's a big one there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, there's so much healing involved in it. So much. Um, I mean, you said it's like, work but it's it's not work it's a uh, transformation yeah. it's like being catapulted into a portal of evolution and the shedding of everything that's not true and everything that's like standing in in your way of stepping into your truth and your mission right exactly. <laughs> and well it, it's an experience it's a beautiful experience um coming together with your twin flame it's a blessing as well to have some such, such a connection because that connection doesn't only have an effect here it has an effect a ripple effect through your multi-dimensionalism oh yeah I, through I all your that. lifetimes through all different existences wherever you are with that other person and you get to heal and transform not only here but the other dimensions as well and you're opening up the portals to unite all those dimensions into this moment here. 
and soul groups. So you each incarnate into a soul group that has probably like a lot of issues that like you're meant to kind of like alchemize for that soul group, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of this is just like in my head. I've listened to some people, but it's, it's very difficult to talk to people about this because a lot of people will just like automatically dismiss you as crazy the regular uh community the regular joe schmo out there i would probably say yes <laughs> the one to label but yes when a person's asleep um meaning like not aware of anything besides their 3d reality yeah it, for them it's like what does that mean uh it, it's completely out of this world but for those that are open to this path and they're seeking it i wouldn't try to seek it try to yeah, seek no. yourself Try to seek yourself first and the other part will come to you naturally because you have achieved a certain level of self-realization. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like before, um, before I had the experience, I had a couple of clients that were asking for assistance with the experience, right? And like, I wanted to believe them, but there was just a part of me that I was just like, I don't know. It just sounds like they're, making an excuse to stay in a really like unhealthy codependent and then i'm like i don't know i don't know and then bam <laughs> <laughs> like okay source or whatever okay fine <laughs> so now you got to experience it yeah and that's what it looks like and people will say oh this is like a unhealthy relationship it's or you just need to let go or but you like yes so and much. You can only let go so much. so much. You feel the love so much and you feel like, okay, this, we can go through this. We can go through this. And then the universe says, listen, listen, you have to go because it wants you to share that love with the rest of the world. Yes. That big love that this opened, like literally, like I literally had like a Kundalini awakening in my body, my heart, like, like it felt like, I don't even want to say a heart attack because that would feel like that, but it was like a, a huge like physical opening and yeah we have to share that with the world that's what mission is yeah and <laughs> this is what we we're here to do is bring the rest of the world to that level yeah and yeah. the soul uh, like twin twin flames from the soul level it is basically a soul kind of just separated itself and came in and they came together, experienced that beautiful love, and then they go separate separate ways again to share that love with the world. Yeah. Through it may be through teachings, through meditation, through for any other form, but it's it's for us to be in that vibration, to be in that love, uh, and to share it. It is the mind that holds on to the experience mm -hmm. uh, that it was so beautiful it was so orgasmic uh that you know the <laughs> soul even felt that experience uh it's not even about that everything else will just pale in comparison now <laughs> exactly uh, but <laughs> once we realize this and we know that it's all in your mind it's mm -hmm. the mind that's creating these um kind of holding on to the memory of it and once you let go of that memory now you're creating the future yes. you're holding the past so now we want to step forward to say okay how do we move forward in life how do i recreate my future how do i go forward without holding on to the past and this is the stage i think uh that a lot of twin flames afterwards go through and it's very complex in a sense to let go because the mind wants to hold on to that experience, of course, because the experience was so powerful that every single cell in your body became alive. And moving forward, it starts to remember these, um, these experiences. So what we have to do is kind of say, okay, I need to let go of this. But how do you let go? Is being grateful for the experience itself. Totally. And one of the things that happens is... Um, we get emotionally devastated because we have to go apart. Mm -hmm. And when we are emotionally devastated, what happens is the physical body has memory. And it has memory of that. It feels like it was traumatized. So we have to learn how to kind of come into this empty space, into the space of our ethers, 
and from there transform this energy, okay, or just be in those waves. And once you bring awareness there, the memory will start to alleviate because the memory is in the energy body. Yeah. And once you do that, the physical body will start to open up. And now when you're going forward, you your actions that you are taking are no longer with the memory of how it was because they're from the present moment. Mm. And that if they're from so the present sense. moment, now you can create again and blossom into this new reality with an open heart. And yes. once you step into that, then another person will come because the universe doesn't want you to be alone. No, it's I know, that. right? <laughs> and, and the thing is that <laughs> we hold on to the past thinking, ah, oh, it's going to be. And then Sometimes we leave the relationship and we start jumping into another relationship to forget the other one. Mm -hmm, no, mm -hmm. don't do that. You have I would to never. wait. Yeah. Yeah. You have to wait till you pass that moment. And it might be painful or difficult, but we have to overcome that. And once you overcome that, then the next person will come. Because otherwise, if we jump into a relationship right away, what happens is they're still not, the, the doors are not fully closed to your past. So that person that's coming in will be like, <gasps> And exciting and then will dim out right away for you mm -hmm. because you're still holding on to the past and this person came to show you still certain aspects of the past yeah or like it's so when you're in a relationship with another and then that dissolves you need to take the time to be in the relationship with yourself and relearn yourself in a way because you're going to be transformed from that connection yeah coming back to your heart yeah yeah it's, it's i always reason, take time in between yeah it is important to come come back to our heart and to be uh one with our inner child that emotional aspect because it wants you it doesn't want anyone else and our mind starts to create this that it wants somebody else <laughs> no but it's in just reality you. Yeah, it wants your own attention. And what we do, we start to focus on the external world. And because we focus on the external world, we'll never find satisfaction because the satisfaction comes from the inner world. So mm -hmm. if you can be with yourself, then the other person will come that can be with you. And it will be even greater than the other twin flame. Exactly. Because, I mean, because not greater than better, but all the growth and the intensity and the love that you filled yourself up with, it'll just be a reflection of that. 100 percent. yes yeah. vibrationally you'll be more expanded yes yeah yeah i always okay. say um union with a capital y-o-u before union <laughs> good yeah so yeah so um hmm, i didn't really have any other questions prepared um how long have you been doing these retreats i want to talk more about that um, retreats probably like three years, three, four years. Okay. Um, on and off. But right now I'm like, okay, getting back into it. COVID happened, uh, you know, and kind of went on a hold. Uh, I've been doing stuff online a lot. Uh, I've been doing expos, but now I feel like, okay, I want to step into like, allow people fully to transform, fully step mm -hmm. into their embodiment of their light. And every single one of us, we all want one thing we just want to be heard we want to be loved we want to be nurtured and what greater love and nurturing can you have when you do that to your own self and when you bring people to that they start to understand and they start to blossom and their hearts open up <laughs> that is the greatest transformation and when they so go beautiful. home and they say oh my god i see the world differently that is true transformation i, so, I was gonna say that's a lasting transformation exactly it, it really changes into their cells and they really embody that and, and i mean if you ask the people from the uh, retreats that i've been holding uh every single one of them had some sort of a big shift that when they come home in the next two weeks they're like wow my life completely changed uh the problems that i had are no longer problems they're a blessing uh their perception towards <laughs> reality changes and things start to flow it's very important for us to understand and to change that dynamic and it's very easy done easily much much more easier done when you are in that space um i myself love to go away into retreats uh, mm -hmm. away for five days or seven days like dark room retreats where i, I was gonna ask you about that 
I want to do a darkness retreat. So after I want to hear about that. <laughs> uh, they're amazing. Uh, they're uh, beautifully powerful, amazing. Uh, the first time I did that, I did it in Thailand. Um, so I went to, in 2017, 2018, I went to uh, Burma, Myanmar, which is next to Thailand. And I set 40 days with the monks there and uh, in meditation. And then after that, I decided to go into a dark room for five days. That was my first dark room retreat. Then I did another one in Oaxaca in Mexico, um, which was another beautiful dark retreat. Uh, the five days are very powerful, especially if a person is meditating on a daily basis and you kind of just came to a certain wall and you want to go beyond that. This is a powerful time. So yeah. our consciousness, we, we're being fed with um, information through our eyes every single day. You know, we see stuff, this, that, and all the time, everything we're feeding our consciousness with some sort of information. But if you're in darkness, there's no light coming in. You're not feeding your consciousness with anything because you're in darkness. It starts to transform itself naturally. So just like when we cut our hand or something and your hand starts to heal itself, the skin starts to heal itself naturally. You don't have to do much. It will heal itself, right? Same thing with consciousness. Nothing is being fed. It starts to transform and heal itself backwards in time. All the way to your mother's womb. Whoa. Now, so depending <laughs> on how willingfully, how strong you are mentally, emotionally, and how dedicated you are for this transformation, they are not easy, but they are the most powerful thing that you can do for yourself. Yeah. More powerful than ayahuasca, more powerful than transformational breath work. I've heard I've done more power because all of those are temporary. Mm -hmm. uh, why I'll say temporary. Well, ayahuasca is an, a substance that comes from outside of you. This is done from within. Yes. <laughs> so the within aspect is a permanent change. Uh, you will have a battle within your own self in that darkness oh, i want to do it so three, bad day three becomes very complex mm -hmm. but if you can overcome that and understand that this is your mind battling with your own self and you stay there and you stay within that space of your heart all of it starts to transform transmute naturally and the expansion into your consciousness becomes so instantaneous that experience that you feel on ayahuasca will last for six to nine months. Whoa. So I'm when you so come ready there, for it. The, when you come out of there, you are in that frequency. Okay. You're in that uh, flower of life, that Sri Yantra energy, that infrared and purplish bluish light is all over you. You are no longer seeing people. You are seeing souls mm. because you have done such deep transformation. Uh, I know people that stayed in there for 40 days. Whoa. Now that's commitment. 40 days. A couple <laughs> was there for 40 days that I know of. Wow. Uh, and it is unbelievably powerful. So, uh, I mean, it was like meditation. I broke meditation back into it. Now you lose all time and space because mm -hmm. you don't know what's left or right. You don't know what day it is, what time it is. Um, you lose everything. So everything becomes by touch. You drink food and eat food uh, in the darkness, everything by touch. Uh, you take shower uh, and that's it. Like you lose yourself completely. That's my next retreat. Definitely. Oh, you have to do it. It is unbelievable. Powerful. <laughs> I can't wait. Unbelievably powerful. So what got you into beginning to meditate? Did you have, were you having like some difficulties in your life? <sighs> um, in 2002, I worked on Wall Street until 2002, 2003. And um, after that, everything collapsed and I lost my job and uh, was kind of just out of work. Mm -hmm. And my mom got sick during that time period. She had, was ill and they heard of a healer in down South America. So I was like, all right, um, you know, I'm not doing anything. And my dad's like, I cannot go. I'm working. Why don't you go with your mom? I went with my mom and my uncle. And when I arrived there, uh, a gentleman came up to me. He's like, my name is Frank. My angels told me I'm supposed to meet you here. I'm like, what angels? I'm 24 years old. What are you talking about? Uh, 
I didn't believe in none of this stuff because I was like, if you give somebody a dollar, here you go. It makes the world go around. That was my belief system. And I was like, angels, what are you crazy? I just flew here for 12 hours. There's no <laughs> way like this guy is crazy. And I kind of just blew him off. And we came into our hotel room. And the following day, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to leave my mom here. I'm in Brazil. I'm going to go visit Brazil a little bit and leave them here with this healer, whatever's happening, my mom and my uncle. And I look, come outside and everybody's dressed in white. And like a thousand people are coming up to this healer. Like he does a thousand surgeries a day. Was this uh, John of God? Correct. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, and I was like, okay, this is very interesting. This is 2004. I'm like, all right, let me go see what's going on there. So I change into white clothes. I go there as well. Um, and I come up to him and he's like, your heart is closed. Would you like for me to do a um, surgery? I'm like, what kind of surgery? What does that mean? Because I see 10, 20 people come in into a room. They sit for 10, 15 minutes and they walk out. You know, and I've seen some other things going on, which was very crazy there. I was like, wow, this is, you know. Yeah, I saw a documentary. Like a, I was like, all right, you know what? Yeah, fine. And did not even think about it. said, yeah. And he gets up and he's in a trance. His eyes are like completely white. He goes into a trance three times a week, uh, two times a day. He does this for three hours and three hours. So about six hours a day, he does this. A thousand people in one half of the day and a thousand people in another half of the day. And he just goes through them. And some people, he just kind of just come up to him. They have a tumor in front of me. He cuts their arm open, takes the tumor out just like that with his hand. No, no gloves, no nothing. Regular mm -hmm. same knife that he's been using for like 10 years and stitches up one time. No blood comes out. Stitches things up one time. The following day, the stitch is healed. <laughs> like, it was like healed for months or years. And he had doctors, uh, lawyers from all over the world came down there to study him. What's going on? Oprah Winfrey went there. I mean, Deepak Chopra went there. You name it. All yeah. the celebrities went there uh, to see what's really going on, how it all works. And I was like, okay. He's like, do you want surgery? I'm like, did not even say anything. He's like, yeah, okay. He gets up, comes up to me and takes his thumb, puts it inside my mouth. Next thing I know, I'm like out of my body, standing behind him, looking at myself. And I look to the side and I see his body. And I'm like looking at myself and don't understand what's going on. And I'm trying to open my eyes. I'm like trying to open. I can't, but I see myself. And I'm like shocked. And everything kind of starts to slow down. Everything is like a glimpse and he takes surgical scissors with a round tip, you know, the surgical scissors that have mm -hmm. a round tip on top, puts it into my nose and with the bottom of his palm hits it and hits it from the inside. And I can feel it inside of my skull, but yet I am looking at myself, seeing all this and I'm feeling it hit. He twists one way, twists another way, pulls it out. It is a spit and I spit a little bit of blood and I'm back in my body. I'm like, whoa, what was just that? Like, what would happen? I'm completely like shocked. They take me from like maybe 40 feet to another room to lay down. And all of a sudden I feel like I'm Superman. I have like so much energy. I want to get up. I feel like I can move mountains. And next thing you know, the woman that was working there, she, they're all mediums. She just taps me on my shoulder, she says, relax. And I'm like, Phew, right back into the bed. And I come into my room. You're supposed to stay in your room for 24 hours. So I come into my room, I close my eyes, and all of a sudden I feel like a, a white orb goes, flies right through me. I open my eyes, nothing there. I'm like, whoa, what is that? Like, didn't understand. I close my eyes again, something is flying through me, but I can feel it, but I don't see it. I open the door, I'm like, is anybody out there? Like, I look around both sides, what the heck is going on? I want to come out, ask questions. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Okay, 24 hours go by. I come out of the room and this guy, his name was Frank. He's like, ah, you're much softer now. I can talk to you. I'm like, you're the guy who talked me, told me about the angels. He's like, yeah. I was like, what's your name? He's like, Frank. I was like, what's going on here? He's like, do you want to know? I was like, yeah. What happened to me? 
He's like, well, you had this surgery, that surgery, this surgery. And he was a medium and he was able to see things. And he was visiting there as well for his own reasons. He's been there for like for three months, just, I guess, spending time there. I was like, okay. He starts telling me stuff. We spent about half a day. I was like, what's going on here? What's this? And I was like, since you know it all, tell me about me. You know, and mm -hmm. he's like, well, you were born here. You had a relationship here. This is your mom, your dad. I'm like, okay, this guy is the real deal. You know, like, okay, he's not, no BS. So about two days later, I started to feel everything. Like after the 24 hours, I started to feel everything. I get up in the morning and all of a sudden I feel like I have a hat on. I look in the mirror, there's no hat. I put my hands, I don't feel the hat. I remove the hands, I feel like it's a hat. I put my hands down and all of a sudden my hands are going deep into the earth. Like my hands are here, but they're stretching deep into the earth. I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. What's going on here? I'm like feeling things. I'm not understanding stuff. I need to get coffee. Now, back then I drank coffee. So there's one coffee shop there. And, you know, this is a third country. He's in the middle of nowhere. This place is in the middle of nowhere. So I go into the coffee shop and there's a line already there. And I stand behind a woman and all of a sudden my stomach starts to hurt so badly, like a sharp pain. I walk away from the line, no pain. I get back in the line, I have pain. I'm like, I don't want to lose my spot to get my coffee. There's only one coffee shop. <laughs> so this woman turns around and I see she was pregnant and there was spokes of white light going through her stomach. And I saw that and I was like, whoa, it freaked me out. I was like, okay. And as soon as I put my hands on my stomach, I stopped feeling. it. So I grabbed my coffee. I go sit down and there's people around me talking and walking around. And all of a sudden I feel a sharp pain go through my whole left side of the body. And I like jumped and I looked at this guy that was standing next to me. And I see the same white beams going through him. There were entities working on them, like being healing. I was like, I didn't understand what I was seeing. So I come up to the tree uh, after I grab my coffee and I'm standing backwards to it. And I felt so peaceful. <sighs> it felt so relaxing. And all of a sudden I feel tingling sensations coming into the back of my head and they're coming in and just like, I can feel the tree entering my body, but yet it was so peaceful and I was okay with it. And it just, completely relaxed me and my personality kicked in said what is going on this <laughs> yeah. is he crazy goes, like what like the wait a minute you know i was like never heard of stuff like this i knew like people you know in the bible and the torah they talk about angels this and that but these are all myths you know this is just stories mm -hmm. That's what my understanding was so i look for this guy frank i find him finally and he says oh yeah you were activated I was like, what do you mean I was activated? What is that? He's like, well, I have to teach you how to protect yourself. Do you know what chakras are? I'm like, what? Protect myself from what? What are you talking about? Like, I want to be me back. I don't want this stuff. <laughs> so I came back home. And by the time I came home, it was the most horrible experience because I was in the airport feeling people. I was looking for bushes, for plants in the airport to hide under, <laughs> to connect with them because it was protective. It felt good. Uh, everything bothered me because I was feeling everything. I was seeing everything. I was a kid with powers, but no wisdom. I was able to tap into anything or anyone, connect to any energy, any dimension, any reality, uh, anything I thought of, I was in that reality but I didn't understand anything how to operate. So when I came back home, I started to tell my parents what I feel, what I see. They're like, don't tell us this. He's going crazy. We need to uh, marry yeah. him right away. He needs to get married. <laughs> He's going crazy. He's 24 years old. What's going on? So I locked myself up in a room for about three to four weeks. And I just kind of stayed there. And I just knew if I closed my eyes, I felt good. I felt good and I started to go places. I started to understand that I was coming out of my body. Uh, I started to understand that I can move energy, my energy bodies. I didn't understand what they were. And then I remembered in Philadelphia, we had Garden of Letters on South Street. This mm -hmm. was the I remember that place. And they're still open. And I remember that store and I got into my car and I drove there. 
Like I came there as soon as I could and I opened up the books and I grabbed the first book was about uh, Mantak Chia, Cosmic Energy. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I opened that book. And when I saw those images, my whole chakras lit up. I was like, whoa, I just started grabbing books and downloads, downloads, downloads. And for about three to four years, I just spent after that in meditation and downloads of different types. And um, it was the most beautiful experiences. That's when I started to connect to the Palladians, having downloads, and they started to teach me about the energy bodies and operations of them. Uh, and beyond these, just four of these, there's a galactic body, there's a mind grid, there's an earth grid, mm -hmm. how to work with these grids. So I started to work on these grids. I started to meditate uh, pretty much all day. I was in meditation. I slept maybe for about an hour or two. Even that sleeping was not sleeping. It was visions of what would happen every single day at 12 o'clock, 12 p.m. exactly on a dot. Everything would happen that I have vision in my one hour, two hour of sleep. And uh, I started to learn and travel to different solar systems, uh, different dimensions, uh, how to work there. And I lost connection to my physical reality. I lost connection to my physical reality. There was no interest in it. Mm -hmm. And after a certain period of time, I was like, wait a minute. Um, how do I get, like, I came here. Why? Yeah. I need to kind of basically connect these 3D and 5D reality into oneness. So there's no separation because what happens when we become awake, we feel that it's great to be in a meditative state, but not in this physical reality whatever you were feeling in the meditative state or connecting to other dimensions, it wants you actually to feel this way in this physical reality. Yes. And this is why we feel it up there in order to be that here. So I, I started to kind of, after three to four years, I started, okay, how do I do this? So I was like, guides, do you guys have money up there? And they're like, no. I was like, why are you guys telling me to do this? I was like, I piled $150,000 worth of credit card debt. Mm -hmm. I had good credit. I understood the financial system. So I was flipping credit cards, uh, constantly flipping credit cards in order to just do what I love to do. <laughs> and um, I was like, okay, I need to start working. I need to start creating. I came here to create. And if we're not experiencing everything here in this reality, then we're not full potential of God. I was like, I want to have everything 100%. for it and nothing. Like basically, I want to have everything and nothing for it and started to work i was like okay manifestation time and there was this guru that i saw that came to new york a lecture or something like a indian guru guy and i was like go there i was like all right so i just got in the car and i drove there and i drove there and i came and i was sitting in the back after this whole lecture and i was like what am i doing here this guy is not helping me see anything he's just talking about the basics seven chakra stuff I was like, I'm in the wrong place. And as soon as he was done, I decided to walk out. And I walk out and he walked out at the same time. And we meet outside in the hallway. And he stops, he stares at me. I stare at him. And there was like a connection. And he comes up to me and he's this like short guy. And he comes up to me, he's like, taps me in the forehead. He says, when you learn how to stop time, this is when you'll be able to create. I was like, what does that mean? I came home and I started to think about it. I started to dive in, dive in, dive in because I was always coming out of my body. And I started to go deeper into my body. As I came deep into my body, I understood what he meant. When you come into the center of your mind, time stops. You're in the center of the vortex. And whatever you place into that space comes into the physical reality instantaneously. Because in timelessness, you create your reality because reality yeah. is motion. So in the stillness of your mind, you can create the motion. And the vacuum of like nothingness. Um, I take um, some, I take some of my clients through a meditation, like deep into their womb. Mm -hmm. And then to take the spark from their heart down into the womb and then like create with that. And I do some sound healing while they go off on their own creation with that and explore their inner cosmos to create what they want there and then send it like up through the chakras and out. Yeah. 
Yeah. So there's like the inner cosmos and the outer cosmos that are equally as vast. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I like going deep into the body. <laughs> yeah. Because everything comes, comes through this body. Mm -hmm. All of our manifestations, all our desires, everything that we want, our abundance, our love, our joy, everything flows through here. Yeah. Yeah. And we can actually get to, instead of going out, we can actually get to other realms by just going in deeper, deeper, deeper into the void. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So yeah. interesting. There's so many different ways to... <laughs> Very so you work with the Palladians, Octurians, the Syrians, uh, uh, the Andromedans. Uh, I worked with so many different ones. And then at one point, I was like, I want to work here mm -hmm. I worked with the Ascended Masters, with the Ashtar Command. I was there all the time uh, until uh, I became a little bit cocky and got kicked out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we, we become used to things as well, especially when you sit so many years in meditation, it's like, ah, okay, normal thing. Let's go there. And I was constantly there and it's all great. Yeah, I but can't imagine. Everything has its own agenda. Everyone has its own agenda. You have your own agenda. I have my own agenda, right? Uh, so do these beings. And mm -hmm. when we connect to them, we connect to the celestial side. So connecting to the celestial side is one thing. We're connecting to their higher self, to their soul levels. So yes, they're, it's powerful. It's beautiful. And we all should do that. This, this is where the benevolence is. Uh, I worked with uh, the um, draconian sides as well. And they're also there's benevolent ones there is no like oh they're dark and this and that no, no 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 we need to work with all of those aspects all those aspects need our love because we are connected there is a this this energetic connection between all of us all of them need nurturing so if you think and you start to push them away oh this is darkness from the darkness of our mother's womb we come mm -hmm. into light darkness is constant light is temporary so as a man, we are here always bringing in light. But when we pass, we back, go back into the darkness. So I would sit in meditation and bring in the darkness instead of the light. See what happens when you bring in the darkness. You actually will fade away into this mellow, mellow state of the womb of mm -hmm. the universe. Which we address as Shekinah energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also, you know, we have to embrace the, the shadow in ourselves too. Yes. And that shadow is the love that requires that's required through from us. Mm-hmm. Because let's take a look at what is what is a shadow? It, it is an aspect that is requiring our own attention. But most of the time, we want to push it away. Oh, my God, I don't want yeah. to move this. Uh, I don't want to look at that. I'm scared of it, right? But when you see a child hurt on the street and crying and injured, what do you want to do? Help. You want to nurture it. You want to yeah. help it. You want to heal it, yeah? But in that moment, that child is actually in darkness. Good point. So we have to see that our own child, all the darknesses, is our own children. It's like fragments, our own fragments yeah. that are broken apart. And when we talk about these reptilian aspects or uh, the other aspects, they're all part of us. If you see it and if you can tap into it, that means it needs your love. Because if you want to be powerful in the multidimensional experience, you need to be in your heart. Only then nothing can uh, attack you or traumatize you or have an effect on you because you are the power. You are the source of creation itself because now you are this energy that's emanating and creating everything. So you become the effect instead of being mm -hmm. affected. And a lot of times people say, oh, in my dreams, I was trapped because you were not in your heart. If you come into your heart space, you cannot. Nothing can ever trap you. Not the greys, not the reptilians, nothing because you are beyond their level of existence it's so beautiful what do you like wow <laughs> it makes me want to like just quit my job and meditate for a couple of years 
<laughs> me too. <laughs> I still feel that way. Um, so I'm sure that you're recognizing since COVID, especially just the accelerated awakening in individuals collectively. Yes. Yeah. We, the, the world, I mean, did a, a leap, like a quantum leap. Totally. Unbelievable quantum leap. I mean, in 2008 or 2012, you tell somebody you meditate, they say, oh, you have mental issues. <laughs> now you tell somebody you meditate, uh, they're like, please teach me. Mm -hmm. it, it changed. Now people want to know about this. They're more interested. Um, they're more open, so much yeah. more open. I mean, it's everywhere. It's in the schools now. It's in the military. It's in the police academies. Uh, it. It's everywhere. It's in colleges universities, you name it, everybody already is aware of this. Um, I have a business as well. And I meditate once a week with my employees. Okay. So I got what kind of business do you have? Um, I ha I'm in the medical field. Uh, I have about 400 employees. And the ones in the office, the 25 managers that I have there, uh, we meditate with them as well. Mm. Because it's important for them to come into that space of love and peace. So uh, it's uh, not only it cre creates a great working environment, but they also create a great environment in their homes. And now they're getting their kids to do this as well. And now they're mm -hmm. having a more harmonious relationship at home. And when they come to work, they're more at a flow. And in the work, wow. instead of becoming, uh, creating problems, they're problem solvers. Uh, so they see things from a higher perspective instead of this perspective, oh, this is happening to me, oh, my job. They're excited to come to work now because they understand that they'll have a transformational moment. To me, for them, is the most important thing is how is their state of consciousness instead of the performance they do? Yes, that is the new way to do things. Yeah. And so if, uh -huh. just the profound effect that that has on so many people's lives, it's like a ripple effect that all really came from you being in your heart and following your mission. Exactly. Because if they so operate, if everybody did that, wow. Yeah. <laughs> if they operate from their heart, that means they'll be able to solve all the tasks mm -hmm. and complete their physical job as needed because they're coming out of a space of love, of harmony. They have a coherence between the mind and the heart. They're in a peaceful state where things are flowing. Instead of coming to work, oh, I'm having this nine to five, huh? but they're having this nine to five in a joyful state. It, mm -hmm. We will have this reality. If you want to change the reality, so dive into it. You want to change the darkness? Don't be afraid of it. Dive into it. Come into the center. From the center, yeah. expand your love. Expand your light. So it encompasses it all because this is the vortex that transmutes everything. Yes. So to speak a little more on the awakening, um, I was sitting with, um ayahuasca and the message i received from her after going through a trauma healing it was that um the second coming of christ is happening now and what it really is is an awakening to of the christ consciousness in each and every individual through the heart center yeah exactly. that we're all it we're all christ consciousness correct and it's On not like jesus like religion like organized religion it's di it's that was like there's there's a lot of distortions around that mm -hmm. but christ conscious pure christ consciousness if um it's an energetic dynamic if there's yeah. a cross there's a blue cross uh our planet is known as the christ consciousness or buddha consciousness right uh the christ consciousness is there is a rotational spin. Now, if we take uh, that, uh, the yin and the yang, how it rotates, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if you draw a cross there, Christ consciousness, you will see the dynamic of this rotational spin that constantly spirals. It is the positive and negative charge. There yes. is really nothing there. There is just a positive and negative charge. They both complement one another and they create this uh neutral point zero point okay when we come into that zero point which is the heart space the closing between the solar plex and the heart space when that happens the positive and the negative rotational spin creates a balance and when that balance happens 
everything around you is the perfect universe that <laughs> is meant to be. Mm -hmm. I love implosion. that. The heart is the implosion moment. So the cross is a negative and positive charge. That brings me into, um, are you okay on time for a little bit longer? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, what is your take on masculine feminine energies? Well, let's let's take a look at masculine and feminine energies. There's a positive and a negative charge. They mm -hmm. complement each other. We all have that within ourselves, okay? And we are both having a female and male come together to co-create, okay? So they both have their own roles in this reality. Uh, let's take a look at even our sexual organs. Male gives, female takes, Mm -hmm. right energetically yeah. male brings from outside into the home and the female creates something out of it yeah, yeah. he brings form formless food. he brings food she makes she makes a beautiful salad he whatever he brings into the home she creates it yeah so it's been even in generational this way so there is an aspect of the female is a creative aspect. The male is the protective aspect, right? Or the aspect that holds the space. Mm -hmm. So both the of them complement one another. Both of them do not do the same task because each one of them is a, uh, you can say, professional in their own way. So this one has its own uh, duties. The other one has its own duties. And when they come together, they create. They create yeah. beautiful foundation, a beautiful structure, whatever it is they create to, uh, for this beautiful world. And this is what they came here to do. Now, it's completely up to each individual if they choose to or not to. It's completely up to them. But they have to be really, really elevated mentally, emotionally to understand the higher purpose of existence. And it is to evolve. As long as we are alive, we're going to continuously evolve. I don't care if you are Buddha, even still until the point that you are alive, as long as you're alive, you're going to continuously grow and evolve. So that is our ask. Uh, this is what we are here to do. Now, you can do it by yourself if you want to, or you can do it with a partner. But this is why we have one heart and two of everything. Yeah. And, because and even if you do it with a matter. partner, the balance of the energies within, I think, is very important. It becomes much more easier. Because yeah. Because now two are co-creating. They're holding space one another. It's like if you and me grab our hands and we start to swing, we cannot fall. Because we're spiraling so fast mm -hmm. that we're holding on. And this center point is the implosion moment. Yeah, if and you like go back and... a natural spin, correct. We're creating a natural spin that continues and will continuously uh, take its place. And of course, take a look at our solar system. Our planet is the center, is the sun. And all the planets around it spiral naturally without any push or pull or force or uh, like saying, <laughs> oh, Mercury going retrograde? I'm going to wait till it passes and then my moon is going to start moving. No, they work together. There is no darkness or light. They take advantage of the energy and they move with it. They flow through it. And this is what relationships should be. Yeah, flow I agree. Things moving as soon as we become stubborn that is our resistance from what is coming through yes it's i feel like relationships that. are going to start to transform oh yeah i feel like we're coming into a time of just having like more conscious healed relationships and that's what I, that's what we need more than anything of course uh, i mean uh you know that that understanding till death do us part <laughs> it's like it's very complex uh relationships you learn from one another and if yeah. you're ready to move on okay move on but in a harmonious way in right. a gentle way in a peaceful way um it doesn't have to be chopped off cut off or done a certain way i mean just never one... talk to this person again and pretend they don't exist because exactly. i can no longer hold this connection that's that creates, um, I can't grab the word. Friction. I can't, I can't grab the word, but I think you know what I mean. It creates like a vacuum. Exactly. And this is, and then you go into the next relationship and you carry that with you. So yeah. even after people go apart, they still have some healing to do. To, yeah. to run away from a problem is the easiest thing. Sort of, yeah. 
is the most easiest thing. You can walk away from anything all the time, but to stand there and to actually overcome things, to grow together, that is true power. That is true wisdom. That's mm -hmm. when you actually understand and kind of start to work with it. Yeah, I understand there are times where the other one is like, that's it, doesn't want to do it, doesn't understand it, or broke some understanding when beyond uh, a point of no return. Okay, but to come But if there's together, no issues, why yeah, not? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and everything could be overcome uh, and understood and accepted uh, within its own limits. So it's very important to understand. Think, and if there was something there limiting the growth of one or both of the individuals, then I understand the dissolving of the connection, right? If it's not serving expansion. Yeah, I think very important to have the qualities of love, understanding, acceptance, loyalty, commitment in a relationship. Because when you have these aspects, now you are working towards uh, a harmonious expression towards one another. Uh, if you are lacking some of those aspects, then, you know, if there's no trust, you cannot work with it. it there's no go going forward. You have to have trust. You have to be able to communicate. You have to be able to be open and be raw with it. Uh, you have to feel no worthy of love. Because if you don't yeah. feel worthy of love and someone is holding a mirror up, trying to show you your own divinity and you don't believe it right here, mm -hmm. It being loved at such a deep level brings up all the shit that you have in here that makes you think you're unworthy of it. Mm -hmm. You know, and some people just want to turn away from that. Some people are not ready and some people <laughs> are. So the universe says, all right, it's time for you to move on. Yeah. Let the universe do what needs to what, what it needs to happen because it has somebody for you and for the other person as well because the other person might be also hurting yeah i think because they are also hurting in their own way so it's not just one absolutely no we come Both together are... with someone for a reason correct you know seeing their their wounds is just kind of like a reflection of like things maybe you need to heal in yourself Exactly. And that's something that we have to be strong enough to recognize and say, ah, I see where I need to do yes. uh, what work I need to take within myself, because it's easy to point a finger. <laughs> right. Right. So what's what's next for you? Um, as far as like, retreats you're holding, you say you want to try to do a longer retreat. Yes, um, trying. To, so I have workshops, which I've which I've done before workshops, uh, seven week workshops. Uh, I think I want to kind of um, condense them and make them a little bit smaller, maybe seven days and, and make a retreat out of it. Mm. Um, so I've done these workshops since 2014 uh, till about 2018 for four years. Uh, and they were very powerful workshops where I take people all the way from their physical body to their spiritual bodies, connection to their higher self, to their soul level, and where they are constant flow with their higher self. So they're no longer looking for outside sources to uh, give them an answer or satisfaction. They will be able to tap into themselves. Uh, and I call the workshop self-sustainable because you become self-sustainable. That was the whole purpose. And does this help you like really deepen into your intuition and psychic connection as well? Everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you go through healing aspects. I want to come to your next retreat. Yeah. So it's like basically putting all that together into one complete atom so that you oh. become the perfect atom. And the, the reason I wanted to do this is because for 10 years, I didn't have any interaction with anybody, like no spiritual communities uh, mm -hmm. or no spiritual people. Yeah. I was looking for a... Um, a teacher or somebody and I could never find anyone and my teachers were the extraterrestrials this is how I communicated mm -hmm. I would see the spaceships I would be in the spaceships physically uh, I, sp I have many times where I've seen spaceships physically and the people with me as well so it's been an experience for me where I've this is where these were my teachers and after 10 years, I wanted to share this and I wanted people to be like me, to be able to see and communicate with them, telepathically connect with them as well. And I raised my uh, oldest daughter telepath telepathically until age of three. Wow. How so old is she now? She's 15. And about 
two months ago, she calls me. She says, Papa, you don't understand. I'm walking through school and all of a sudden I start to see my org field in front of me. I couldn't even <laughs> see beyond. She's like, all these colors in front of me. And I knew that I was seeing my aura and I said, it would be cool. And I, she's like, I asked my higher self, it would be cool for me to see other kids aura. And she said, before I could finish the sentence, I started to see the kids auras next to their, when they were standing next to their locker room. Wow. I was like, that was I mean, probably like such a touching moment for you, huh? Oh yeah. I was like, wow. I mean, she'll, she does pretty much everything I do. She'll tap into your energy field. She'll be able to tell you what needs to be adjusted, what belief systems that you are, that are holding you back. Uh, she's very in tuned. Uh, so is my second one and my third one as well. So they're all, especially my third one. She was, she's in the hard space all the time. Uh, she was completely in the spaceship. So How old was, is she? She is nine. Oh, so Did she, you have three girls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got three girls, a, a bouquet of flowers. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. so, yeah. And it was very powerful to, um, to kind of see the last one being in the spaceship. That's when I start, stopped working with them because I felt like, why are you guys doing this? Like, why is she here? One thing, if you guys take me and the other thing is like, why is she here? Um, so throughout the time that I was working with them, I have about, 28 other children that are not physical mm -hmm. and I would visit them and they would visit me. Uh, my oldest one, she's 28 years old already at this time, but she's, she's 15 here, but she's 28 in the other dimension. Yeah. She okay. Visits. She comes and visits, <laughs> visits her as well. And she tells me, she's like, ah, I just saw myself the other day. And this is, this is this I got. I was like, how does she look? She's like, she looks like me, but she got much bigger eyes. Wow. Like, okay, perfect. And this is like, I'm talking to you right now about it and I can sense her here. <laughs> so, yeah, I had my first encounter with um, intimacy with a light being like mm -hmm. a month ago. It was, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so like, do you Nordic? like go into other dimensions and Nord can see these? Nordic? Huh? Is he Nordic? I don't know. It was, it was, um, so I was in a, uh, like my personal sex magic practice and all of a sudden this just like, it was just okay. white light. It, I couldn't even see like who it was for like, maybe like a split second it was like kind of like the energetic imprint of my previous partner, but that went away like that. And it was just white light. So I don't even think it was like a being from, I don't think it was like anyone's higher self or anything. I feel like it was a, another being and they came closer to me and we merged. And when we merged, the light still stayed solid, but then around it, it like dissipated. And there was like different colors in the light that was like more transparent all around it. And I just felt the energy like up through my chakras and I was like taking my, my own energy up and it just, I started crying. It was just so beautiful. <laughs> I want to experience it again. And I know I will when it's time, but <laughs> that was pretty cool. And I was like, wow, am I going crazy? Did that just happen? <laughs> no. Um, yeah, okay, well, we'll tap into that later. Have you ever had an experience like that here? Yes. Okay. Um, so these, these Nordic beings, they come through uh, a lot. And after a certain period of time of having these kind of experiences, these are also agreement and contracts that we have. I decided to kind of, oh, okay, I want to kind of end this agreement mm -hmm. because um, there was, they were taking samples like DNA from me uh, and creating other life forms. I always want, I also wondered that too. I'm like, was this thing? Yeah. <laughs> no, this thing is actually wants you to embody it. It is an aspect of your own self. It's this tall, beautiful white light that goes and wants to enter right into the this area here for you. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. Star, yeah, yeah. And it also has to do with the left side of, um, you know how we have little dimples in the back above the, the butt? Mm -hmm. Okay, there's that channel there that goes all the way up here. Okay, so it's so just a higher, say, this was the higher aspect of me. Well, let's say it was a higher aspect of you, but it's also a celestial being that was coming through. Cool. This tall, like, uh, he was like tall, white, and very gentle. Yeah, yes, very gentle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. So, um, how else do you, you, I know you have a business, so you probably have like a limited amount of time that you work with people, but how else do you work with people besides like workshops and, or retreats? So I do one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, I don't do them a lot, um, because they take a lot of time, mm -hmm. but, oh, I do one-on-one -on -one sessions as well. Uh, and usually, uh, I work with the energy bodies or I'll take them to a hypnotic state where, um, the hypnotic state is a little bit different. It's a multidimensional hypnotic state. Uh, so we'll go through that or uh, the energy bodies. I like to work with the energy bodies is because they're more conscious. They're here still. And we go through the, through the shift of energies and align those energies with the heart space. Wow. That's so cool. So releasing karma agreements of uh, patterns. Uh, and I mean, you'll feel it like for a couple of days. Wow. I might book a session with you sometime soon. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah. They're fun. Um, I, I just started to do the hypnotic sessions because mm -hmm. it was like, okay, let me try it. How um, are you liking that? They're, they're pretty cool. I actually love it. It's like watching a movie because I, I get to experience and see what every, uh, whatever the client's going through. So when they're going through these different dimensions, I'm like, whoa, this planet I never been to or this reality I've never been to. And I get to see that and I feel it as well. So it's like basically watching a movie. <laughs> wow, that's really I cool. That, yeah. I, I go into trance with my clients and feel a little bit, but I don't have those like intense visuals. I would love to get there someday. <laughs> the, the visuals for me are more through the energetics. Okay. So the energy draws the picture for me. I mean, you and have in, that as well. And in time, in time, the energy gets more, re your sense of the energy becomes more refined. So the pictures are clearer and they make more sense, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, yeah. So so the, the crystallization in our emotional body, uh, our mental and our astral are very important because through those templates, you get to see the truth. So you want to have clarity within your own templates. So the truth comes from the source itself, not the truth of the personality. Mm. Damn. Well, you have definitely dropped some wisdom here tonight. And okay. I really enjoyed this conversation. I can't believe it's been almost and two hours. <laughs> well, we're just so is there something else that you, you want to talk about that we didn't go over? I mean, we can talk for hours, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we can talk for hours and more and more about this stuff. So, so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So.